All right, so today I peeked inside my snake egg incubator and sure enough, I have three boxes of ball python eggs that are starting to hatch. As a matter of fact, it looks like I have several snakes that are completely out of the eggs. So, you know, this is pretty much the most exciting time of the entire ball python breeding season where we actually see the fruits of our labor and you can see pretty much what the odds are from the pairing. And I know in one of those boxes, actually Bobby here was the father. So I'm hoping we'll hit some bamboos because Bobby's a bamboo. So technically half of those eggs should actually have the bamboo gene in them. And the other was actually a really big clutch split between two boxes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull those eggs out. Let's take a look at those snakes. All right, so these are my boxes. I think what I'm gonna do is I am gonna save the bamboo clutch to the end. I'll keep you in suspense on that one. And then we'll take a look at these two boxes here. Actually, let's take a look just at this one box. And this is pretty much my setup here. I have some scissors, and I like to use big scissors. I know some people use the smaller ones. I really don't like scissors with the really sharp points in case, you know, a snake freaks out. I don't want to poke them in the eye or something like that. And then I have some paper towels. You definitely need some paper towels because cutting eggs can get really messy. And then another thing I have, I have just a few names in here in the jar that we had from naming our snakes from before. So what I'm going to do is if snakes are completely out of the egg, I'm actually going to give them some names. It looks like I just have four names in here. So hopefully we won't have more than four or maybe we'll have to actually make up some names for some of these snakes. So that is pretty much my setup. This was actually uh, my spider pied crossed with my 100% het caramel albino female. So the female looked normal, but she was 100% het caramel albino. And what I want to do is I'm going to take a look inside of this box and see what we have here. Let me zoom out just a little bit so it doesn't get out of focus. And let's take a look inside of this box. Oh, oh, <laughs> I think we definitely need more than four names. Wow, these are almost all, I think these are all out of the egg. Wow, I had no idea that these were completely out of the egg. And this is pretty easy because they're either a spider or they're a normal and they're all 100% head pied. So it's not too exciting of a clutch. It's pretty much, uh, pretty much a no-brainer. We'll just take a look at these real quick. So this one is, a, you know, one thing it'll be interesting on these to see if there's any belly tracks on these 100% head pied. So this is definitely 100% head pied. Look at this. We know for sure it's a, a head pied, no belly tracks at all. Nothing on the side, nothing at all that would indicate that this is a head pied at all. That is really interesting. No head pied markers at all on this one. So we have, looks like that one, and then we have another one. These are just normal, 100% head pied. This one doesn't have any tracks at all on the belly either. So um, the other thing that's really interesting on these, so this was, we know they're 100% head pied, but they're 50% het caramel albino. So there's a 50% chance that these actually carry one copy of the recessive caramel albino gene. And you really can't tell if it does or not. You can't even tell that they're het pied, which is interesting. Let's take a look at this other normal. This one is another 100% het pied. 50% het caramel albino and if we look at the belly tracks on this one you can actually see maybe a little bit right along the sides I would say it's not really strong not really strong het pied marker on that one but look at how black these are really dark normals pretty amazing how dark they are I have some normals that are really yellow in color and these are really super dark so these other two are actually spiders. This is a spider. The interesting thing about spiders is there's a lot of people that are really against breeding a spider because of a possible head wobble and neurological issues. So let's take a look at this guy and see if he actually has any kind of a head wobble. And doesn't look like he really has much of a head wobble or a stargaze or anything like that. Really good looking spider. I love these spiders. And the spider essentially is co-dominant, so when you breed it to something, 50% of the babies come out spider. 
and uh, 50 percent come out not spider so it's it's really interesting and the spider is essentially reduces the the pattern it really makes it turn into like a spider web kind of a pattern and then also along the sides it almost makes it look like a calico along the sides although this doesn't have any calico and this is just a straight spider really good looking spiders and i know there's a lot of people at the reptile shows they're like hey where's all the spiders <laughs> and that's one of the reasons that i actually bred the spiders because there's a lot of people that were actually asking for them at the shows here's another spider it doesn't look like this one from what i'm looking at here doesn't really look like he has a head wobble really bright this one's a really bright looking spider really beautiful morph this is actually one of my favorite morphs, the spider, but unfortunately some of them have a head wobble and some of them don't. As a matter of fact, the, the father on this one has a slight stargaze, and this was kind of an experiment to see if actually, you know, if they say if you breed a spider to uh, that has a head wobble to something else, then more than likely it's a 50-50% chance that it's going to get a head wobble and you don't really know. And it looks like even though the parent had kind of a stargaze on this one it doesn't really look like this one has any kind of a head wobble at all i just love the spiders these are these are amazing animals i know there's there's a big controversy over the spiders and this is actually a really good example of the spider i'm glad none of these have a head wobble all right so here is the second half of that clutch this is a spider pied cross with my 100 percent head caramel albino female Let's take a look at what we have in this one. This one uh, is further behind the, uh, than the other one. It's pretty interesting that there are two boxes of the same clutch, pretty much on the same level of the incubator, but one box is ahead of the other one. That is really interesting. So what I'm going to do on this one, I'm actually going to cut these open just a little bit so we can see if it's a spider or if it isn't a spider. And essentially you really have to cut them open just a little bit to take a peek at the pattern to see if it's actually a spider or not. And really I don't want to take them out of the egg, I just want to peek inside and let them come out on their own. So let's see. Let's take a look at this and see if we can see if this is a spider or not. So this guy is, some people say that they're kind of worried about um, the the snake kind of getting stuck in the egg and they really don't want the, the, you know, sometimes people say that they can get stuck in there and they really don't have a way to get out and really some people cut them to kind of save the snake from getting stuck in the egg, which is kind of interesting. And let's see if I could, <laughs> if I can get this guy. I just want to cut just enough just to see if it's a spider or not. And take a look at this. This one is really obvious. You can see the reduced pattern on this one. You don't even have to cut it hardly at all. You can definitely see this one is a spider for sure. So let's take a look at this one. This one actually went in a little bit, which is good. And we can take a look at this one. Oh, let's see. These are some really big, healthy hatchlings. It's pretty incredible. Mm. Oh, this one. <laughs> this one's kind of hard to tell. Well, I would say you can definitely tell on this one. It looks like a normal to me. <laughs> it's pretty easy to tell once you cut it open the difference between a normal and a spider. So that's 50% right there, 50-50, half normal, half spider. Let's take a look at this one, see what we have. Uh, this one, very obvious, <laughs> you can see on that one. That is definitely a spider. You can see the reduced pattern right along the back. So two spiders, one normal. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, 
This one to me. That one looks. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> it's it looks pretty normal to me. Nothing really spectacular there. So we have one more that actually hasn't come out at all, and I'm just going to take a quick little peek inside of this one. And I would say since uh, all the other all the other eggs either are are peeping out or they're completely out, I'd say it's definitely safe to cut this one, even though it's not cut at all. That one. Uh, <laughs> I would definitely say that one right there is definitely a spider. If you can see that, you can see the white coming up on the sides, almost like a calico. That is definitely a spider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave those in the eggs, put them back in the incubator, and then we'll set these other ones up in the hatchling rack. But what I'm going to do next, I'm actually going to look at these bamboos. I'm really excited for this bamboo clutch over here. Let's take a look at these. We'll take a look at this. I'm really excited about this. This is Bobby's babies right here. <laughs> see what Bobby produced this year in this clutch. This was actually, let me see what this was. This was actually a bamboo, which is Bobby, crossed with my normal number one, which is actually the snake that I got for free on Craigslist. I didn't even know if it was a male or female. Come to find out, I probed it, it was a female. And here, like three years later, I actually grew it up and got it big enough to actually breed it. So this is the first time that girl is bred. And Bobby is the father. So we'll either get complete normals. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh. So actually, this is really interesting. So someone actually said that they thought my free normal female was something completely different. They didn't think it was a normal. They thought it had something else in it. And take a look at this. This is really interesting. This seems like... Uh, I don't know this if you take a look at this this almost looks like it has maybe a jumbled up pattern uh, I don't know maybe it's uh, maybe it's normal <laughs> I think this is just a normal so at first it looked like the pattern was all jumbled up and I, I'd say it's kind of a little bit jumbled up on top but you can see that normals are kind of polymorphic and you really can't tell by a jumbled up pattern that there's really anything going on in the snake. I'd say it's kind of unusual for a normal because of what the pattern looks like. It's kind of, you know, it's not really even like most normals, but I would say it's pretty normal. <laughs> I'd say maybe it's, maybe it's just a different normal. I don't know, it's, it's really interesting that it actually came out that way with kind of a jumbled up pattern which is really kind of interesting. But I would say, as far as I can tell, it's pretty normal. So what I'm gonna do on these last four eggs is I'm actually gonna cut these open and see what Bobby gave us this year as far as hatchlings in this clutch. And I actually paired them up with a few other hatch, a few other snakes, so we'll see in the future kind of cutting open some other clutches actually what he produced so this one this one definitely looks like if you can take a peek in there I don't like to cut them open too much that is definitely a bamboo you can definitely tell that it is a bamboo this one just from the head it kind of looks normal actually I'm just gonna poke them in the nose so they go back in so when I cut them they're not coming out I want them to stay in the egg Let's take a look at this one. <laughs> this is really goopy. That is really goopy. But that one, I would say, I don't know if you can actually see in there, in that egg and the bunch of goop in there. That looks like a normal, but it looks like a really pretty yellow normal compared to some of my other normals. It looks kind of interesting that's a little bit yellow. And let's take a look at this one. Just from the head here, I'm gonna boop it in the nose. <laughs> Just from the head, it looks like it is a bamboo. So 
So you can definitely tell by this one. That, I don't know if you can tell <laughs> that one. That is just a straight bamboo there. And then we have one more that hasn't opened yet. It hasn't come out at all. I'm just going to take one little tiny snip on this one. Take a look on this one. Oh, this one is really, 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 <laughs> really goopy and, and red. You see the veins in there? You can actually accidentally cut the veins. It doesn't really matter. But you can see it's, it's really light there. That is definitely a bamboo. So we had pretty good odds, it looks like. Uh, what do we have? Three bamboos and two normals, which is pretty awesome. All right, so I wanted to show you just how big these hatchlings are. Take a look at these. I have never seen hatchlings so big like this. They, it is pretty incredible that they are just really like jumbo size hatchlings. I've never actually seen them so big and healthy. It is pretty incredible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take one spider. I'm gonna start with a spider and we'll get it out of this tangled mess here. <laughs> oh my goodness. These are some hefty ball python hatchlings. Pretty amazing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually set them up in my hatchling rack. So this is the tub that I use for my hatchling rack and I put them over here in a 90 degree hot spot. I put coconut husk in here that's just damp a little bit, a fresh cup of water in a deli cup. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a name for this spider and see what we can name it. So this is, ah, <laughs> how about this? This is Precious. All right, that is a great name for a spider. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put the name on the tub. This is kind of my label that I use. This is Precious, 100% Het Pied, 50% Het Caramel Albino. All right, so here is the next one, another really good looking spider. And I am gonna set this one up in the hatchling rack. And I'd say these are really close to the bamboos. The bamboos are really close to looking like this. The, the good thing about the bamboos is they don't have any problems with the head wobble or anything like that. But I still really love the spiders. They are really cool snakes. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna pick a name. We're running low on names. Here is the perfect name for that one. This is Peanut. <laughs> Great name. All right, so here's another one. This is just a normal 100% head pied, 50% head caramel albino. Just looks completely normal and it's possibly a double head. For sure, 100% head pied. And the thing that really amazes me about this snake, as well as all the other ones, that there's no indication at all that this is head pied. I guess you can see maybe the patterns are a little bit broken up on the side, maybe not doesn't really have the alien heads as most normals. You can see it's kind of kind of broken up a little. The alien heads are pretty much washed out. You can't really tell. Maybe that is another indication of head pied, which is kind of interesting. Getting down to two names here. Let's see. Oh, well, actually, there's three names in here. Let's take a look at this. This is, ah, here's a good name. This is Houdini. All right. All right, so if you've been watching, you probably caught my mistake. I actually printed out Houdini's label, and then I realized on my last two snakes, I actually forgot to put spider in there. So I'm gonna go back and change the other two labels and put spider, 100% het pied, 50% het caramel albino. All right, so that was Precious Peanut and Houdini, and this is another litter mate. This is another normal 100% het pied, 50% het caramel albino. Albino. Now let's take a look at this one. This one's kind of interesting because it has a little bit more of an alien head right here. Maybe not so much down here. So it almost looks like, well, you can definitely see some alien heads up on the sides up on this one. So I don't know if the lack of alien heads is really a good indication of a het pied. It looks like this one is looking really normal, really regular in the pattern on the top, really beefy snake. It's, I can't believe this just hatched with no meals at all. Look at how beefy that thing is. That is a really healthy snake. So let's get a name for that one. We're down to just two names. 
Let's take a look at what we have here. This one is Coco. All right, this is Coco. All right, so here is the sibling of Coco, Precious, Houdini, and Peanut. <laughs> a lot of names to remember on that one. This is actually another normal 100% het pied, 50% het caramel albino. Now let's take a look at the alien heads on this one and see if we can see any het pied markers at all. This kind of has an interesting pattern right on the side right in here kind of a blended pattern you see I would say most normals are pretty much just like this this looks about as normal as you can get as a normal and there's just slight variations in the normal classic wild type ball pythons I don't really see any any markers hardly at all maybe a little bit of tracks no maybe on the belly on this one a little bit of tracks along the belly little bit you really can't tell sometimes they have really strong tracks right down the belly and you really can't tell on this one at all so this is the last name here in the bucket I want to have to actually print out some names find some more on the internet this is slinky <laughs> that's a good name all right, so here's the last one. This little tiger needs a name. This is actually Bobby's offspring. Even though it doesn't carry the bamboo gene, Bobby is the parent of this little guy. Completely, 100%, normal, no hats, nothing at all. If you take a look at this one, just for comparison, if you think you know, you think you can tell by the alien heads if you can see head pied in there, I would say definitely not. You can't really see any alien heads on this one either. And this actually looks kind of more like a tiger with the, the tiger stripes kind of down the sides, which is kind of kind of an interesting pattern on this one. Completely unexpected for an, a typical normal, which is pretty unusual. But I would say it's just a variation on a theme. It's pretty much just a normal as far as I can tell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this guy Tiger. <laughs> that is a good name for this snake. All right, so my hatchling rock is really filling up nicely over here. I actually have 30 ball pythons in the hatchling rack over here. And I'll give you a quick difference, just a real quick show off between a spider and a bamboo. So this is one of the spiders that I just hatched out. And let's compare that to Yoda, who's one of my bamboos. And we'll see what kind of a mood Yoda's in here. <laughs> see if I can get him out of here. And you can kind of see him side by side. They both have really reduced patterns. About as close as you can get to a spider is a bamboo, which is really close, but it's definitely a completely different morph and a different snake. You can definitely tell there is a difference. As a matter of fact, I almost like the spider a little bit more in the pattern and the color, but the problem is, is the head wobble. And this guy looks like he might, that bamboo has more of an aggressive feeding response too. So it looks like he might actually take a bite out of the spider. I don't want them together for too long. We'll keep them down there and separate. But this is definitely filling up very nicely. And once that fills up on the bottom, I have nine more in the bottom. Then I'll actually have to pull this out over here. This has been pretty much out of commission. This is my ARS 1065. I kind of stick it in the back in the off season. And then as soon as I start filling it up with hatchlings, I'm gonna bring it out and move it out over here. All right, so I took a quick peek in the incubator. It looks like we have six more boxes of ball python eggs that are due to hatch in the next two or three weeks. It's gonna be really exciting. As a matter of fact, one of those boxes was the other half of the clutch of Bobby's eggs and none of those snakes were actually peeking out and the, the eggs weren't cut so I thought I better not go in there with my scissors I don't like to cut eggs unless you actually see a snake peeking his head out or if you see a snake completely out of the shell and that's pretty much the time where I feel it's safe to go in there and kind of snip them open and look in and see what the results are. And the next snakes that are supposed to hatch right after that are actually my triple het albino pied clowns, which will be really interesting. And you know, usually with a het, you don't really see an influence of the het. We were kind of looking at some of these snakes, looking for the het pied. Well, on these, with the triple het, I'm thinking they may interact somehow with the triple het, and maybe we'll see some interesting colors and patterns 
coming out on the triple hat albino pied clowns. As a matter of fact, I went over to Morph Market and kind of took a look to see if anyone's ever produced it. And it looks like it may actually be a world's first for the triple hat albino pied clowns. So it'll be pretty interesting to see what those snakes look like. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.